What's up everybody, uh, Sharpie43 here, and I'm here to show you how to make a drop pod. So yeah, let's do this. Loading menu, anti-dots. Slow as ever. Alright, so, this is what you want to do. Well, right now I'm just going out to the island for a suitable place to land because you don't want to land your drop pod in the water. Anyway, so, you get out here, you're going to go to the spawn options, you're going to go to structure, spawn a block flat, and this is just optional. I'm sh doing this for the tutorial part. You don't have to spawn a block, it can be for whatever part of the map you want. You're going to go back, you're going to go to walls, doors and uh, windows you're gonna spawn a tunnel long and just for this I'd recommend doing rotation snap for 90 you're gonna put it as far down as you want then go back go to scenery barricades barricade large uh, right now I'm trying to figure out a way how to use barricade smalls for a dinner drop pod but not much luck so far anyway the tunnel is perfectly shaped for the uh, barricade, apparently. So all you need to do is put them up next to each other. Now I'm going to set mine for fixed right now, so that way I can keep it in right in position for this demonstration. Spawn another one. Get it perfectly parallel. What you want to happen is it's a perfect tri You want it to have almost a perfect triangle or slightly on top of the other. Otherwise, uh, you'll hit the ground and you'll just instantly die in a regular game type if you don't have your game set up. As you can see there. Yep. Now, just move the block back a little bit. Now, what I recommend for the long, since it's a long tunnel, scoot it down a lot, because the longer the tunnel, the more accurate your drop pod's going to land. It won't just break apart, it'll hold together a lot longer. It just depends on how high you put the drop pod up, though. If you're doing it from a relatively, fairly high altitude, I recommend you, yeah, longer tunnel. Let's move on to what's going to hold it up. I re you can use custom power-up, as I just previously showed you, but I prefer to use overshield, just in case the drop pod does break apart too early. That way you don't just instantaneously hit the ground and die. Set it to normal. This is optional. This part is optional. You can put a roof over it if you want. Again, it depends on the type of map or gameplay you want. This is strictly for tutorial purposes. Uh, uh, there we go. Alright. And this is, this is how it should work. You're going to hit the ground. Sorry if it's lagging a little bit. I really need to get a better capture card. Set it to instant respawn. Now, this part is optional. Uh, see, I'm setting it back to fixed. I'm going to delete the power up. This is another way to do it. Uh, you can, instead of using a power up, uh, do it as a weapon. Uh, there we go. And for just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use a, a sniper rifle. All right. Change it to fixed. This is and this is not the way I would pref that I prefer because I just personally don't think it works out that well. You jump in, change it. Oh, change it to normal first. You go in, pick up the gun, fall, and like I said, uh, you don't live. And that's basically all you need to make a drop pod. I prefer the first method. And if you want to see the drop pod in action, you can visit my uh, earlier video. Boom, and you can go check it out for the game type. All right, thanks guys. See you.